Hello. So this is an example of complementary base pairing. And what we're going to do is we are going to take a DNA template strand, which you can see right here. And we are going to actually make the following sequences off of it. We're going to make our DNA coding strand sequence, our messenger RNA sequence, our tRNA anti codon sequence and protein sequence from that. So if you remember when we talked about DNA complementary base pairing, we talked about how A and T or T and A complement each other and how G and C or C and G complement each other. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this sequence and we're just going to write the complement of it and that will be become what the DNA coding sequence is. If you remember, we have our five prime and our three prime ends, and those are going to be anti-parallel. So when we go down here, it's going to be five prime, and then you are going to take the A. So we're going to use this to make this, right? We're going to take the A. That's going to be a T. The C is going to be a G, and then the other C will be a G. So that's our very first three-letter sequence, and three-letter sequences in DNA are called triplets. So we have this triplet, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now from there, we're going to go to TAC. T is going to base pair with A. A will base pair with T and C with G. Now we have three Ts, so then that means we have three As. G, C, T will become C, G, A. A, T, T will become T, A, A. And then we have TGA, which will come A, C, T. And then we'll end with E, three prime. And then I just go back all the time to say I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that looks good so far. Now the next thing that we want to go to is uh, make our messenger RNA. So instead of making a complementary strand, like in replication, now we're gonna go into transcription, making our messenger RNA. And to make our messenger RNA, we technically are using the template strand. Now, what I'm gonna show you here that's pretty interesting is that when we do this, it's gonna make things really easy because you can look off the DNA coding strand to basically get your messenger RNA sequence. But let me show you first how to do it with the template strand, and then I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So again, we're at three prime, so we're gonna be at five prime again. And so we're looking here, we have A, C, C. Now in RNA, it's a little different. We still have our G's and our C's, they're complement to each other. So C pairs, base pairs with G, G with C. And we still have T will base pair with A. What we differ on here is that now A is gonna base pair with a base called your cell or U. So there are no T's in RNA, okay? So when we go to this, when we have our A there, we're actually gonna base pair it to a U, and then we have two C's, so that's gonna be two G's. Now, that's how we got it by using the template, but if you look ahead, Right above us, you'll notice that it looks similar. The only difference is instead of having that T, we have a U. So let's try the next one, this TAC, T-A-C. So in messenger RNA, we then will T will base pair with A, the A will base pair with U, and then the C will base pair with G. And if you look above at that triplet, you'll notice it's the same thing. We have just base paired um, Instead of having the T there, we have a U. The TTT becomes AAA. As you can see above, it's the same thing. GCT becomes CGA, right? Same. And then we have TAA that's here. Here we have, again, ATT. So we're going to have UAA there. And then our final one is ACT. You're going to go or that TGA, but if you look right above, it's ACT, right? You can go A, C, U, and we're gonna end on a three prime. 
Now we want to make our tRNA sequence. And how we do that is we use the messenger RNA sequence right above that. And so we're doing complementary base pairing just like we did before. And again, this is RNA, so there's no Ts. Now these are the anti-codon because these right here are the codons. So this anticodon is what recognizes the codon in the messenger RNA. And if you remember, on the other side of it has the amino acid. So we're going to do the complementary, which is 5' prime here. And then we go ahead and we do the complement of these. So we have U goes to A, and then you have CC, right? The other one is AUG, so we have U, A, C. We have three U's. We have a G, we have a C, we have a U, we have an A and two U's, and then we have a U, a G, and an A, and we end on five prime. So that is our, is our anti-codon sequence. Now, when we actually go to make the protein sequence, we don't use the anti-codon. We actually use the codons. And that's because the codon, the messenger RNA, that's the code to get our proteins. And so how we do that is we take, we take this very first, we can look, we have UGG, and we always start, just so that you know, on here, you start at the five prime end when you're looking for these things, right? We go from the five prime end when we want to look for the messenger RNA. And so on here, right, that five prime, we don't have to write that, but that UAA, how we do this, this is the first letter on the five prime side, side. And so that's A here, or sorry, that is U here, right? How many times am I gonna mess this up? U here, the second letter is G. So we're gonna do this. So you notice the first one, all of these are G, right? And then for this, are U. All of these, the second letter is G. And so you notice there's an overlap right here. And so for the third, that's on the three prime side, right? That's the G, so you look right here. And you'll notice UGG stands for tryptophan. Now, with this, we're actually not gonna write this down. Why is that? Well, if you remember when we were talking in class that the start codon, what a protein always starts with, the amino acid, is methionine or the AUG codon. This first one is not the AUG, so it is not an amino acid in our sequence, right? What we're going to go is we're going to keep looking until we find an AUG. And an AUG just happens to be the second one there. It might be the third or the fourth. You have to look, right? And you're looking for that AUG from the five prime site. And so on here, basically what you're doing with this after that is you're going AUG. We know that's methionine. Now, if we want to go back and we don't necessarily like see it, we're going to practice here how we find that, right? And so essentially this is the A, so all of these, all the way down is A. Here's U, so you see that's where they overlap, and then the G is right there. So let's look at the next one. So we have that, and I check it off so I know I've done it. The next one's A, A, A. So I have A, A, so they overlap here, and then I look for the A right there, right? So that's lysine, and we write it down. The next one we have, check that off, is CGA. So we have C and we have G. So I can circle that. And then the last part of that's A. You can go. And in this block, they're all the same. How nice is that? The next one, so we finish that, is UAA. So let's look. We have U. We have A. These are the overlapping. And the last one is A. So it's going to be this, right? So you can see UAA next to it says stop. 
just like we have codons that are called start codons that start the amino acid sequence, we have stop codons that stop it. And it's because it codes for a release factor, if you remember us talking about this in class. It's a release factor. So at that point, it's going to basically release from the ribosome and move on, and it's stopped. So we have that. If you notice, we have one more amino acid, but just like the first one, it's not included because we've already stopped. So this is an example of how you use complementary base pairing to create sequences known as the DNA coding sequence, the messenger RNA coding sequence, the tRNA anticodon sequence, and the resulting protein sequence.